It's not just in your head. Allergies really are getting worse. Whether you're sneezing non-stop every spring. How the scratch my eyes up so bad. This year I'm fighting for my life. Or you suddenly develop the food allergy to something you'd be able to eat your whole life. Or maybe your skin just become ultra sensitive and is breaking out to everything. I have had hives for 17 days now. Whatever it is, it's not just you. Doctors are seeing more allergies, more sensitivities, and more unexplained reactions than ever before. There's been what appears to have been a doubling of food allergy over the last 10 years or so. Global allergy rates are climbing, but genetics doesn't change as fast, which means something in the way we're living today is driving this increase. So what could it be? Because at this point, it just feels like we're becoming allergic to existing. You can technically be allergic to almost anything, from the common foods like nuts and shellfish, to pollen, otherwise known as hay fever or allergic rhinitis, to even more obscure things like sweating after exercise and even the cold. I have a condition that makes it so my body reacts to cold temperatures as an allergen. This is my arm after putting ice on it for two minutes. An allergy is when your immune system mistakes something harmless like pollen or peanuts as a threat, and it releases a bunch of chemicals that trigger an allergic reaction. And one of those chemicals is called histamine. So histamine is very good at making you itchy and swollen and it will give you hives and make you feel hot. But it can also, in larger amounts, cause the more worrying features of more severe allergic reactions. That's Professor Adam Fox, a world leading expert in paediatric allergy. I spoke with him to better understand how different allergies can present and what is driving this increase in allergy rates. The most common symptom to a food allergy starts as itchiness. And then typically a rash around the mouth or this sort of thing, so angioedema of the lips. And then if the allergy is really severe, it can spread to the whole face and to the rest of the body, aka hives. I have a walnut allergy and I wanted to show you a picture of the first time I ever had a reaction to walnuts and show you the symptoms that I had. This is a great picture, um, I'm, uh, apologies because I'm sure it was deeply unpleasant for yourself, but, but <laughs> a, a lovely illustration of the sort of thing I get shown in clinic on a daily basis. And then in a small minority, and if you're really unlucky, you could get features of a more systemic and severe reaction, what we'd refer to as anaphylaxis, where there's either involvement of your breathing, so typically it'll be either um, chest tightness, difficulty in breathing, wheeziness, persistent coughing, or an effect on your circulation. So a drop in blood pressure, which would typically present as dizziness, confusion, or even collapse. And that's all just food allergies. If you suffer from seasonal allergies, AKA hay fever, then you're probably familiar with the constant sneezing, itchy eyes, and runny nose too. <laughs> If I put my face down like this, boogers will just like drip down. The first ever known case of hay fever was reported in the early 19th century by pediatrician Dr. Jonathan Bostock. And at the time, hardly anyone suffered from hay fever. It took him nine years to find around 20 cases, which he published in The Lancet. Contrast that with 200 years later, when 20% of the adult population have hay fever. So, you know, this is clearly not genetics because things have changed far too quickly. FYI, you can listen to the full conversation I had with Professor Adam Fox on my Patreon. I work full time as a doctor and in my spare time I create these videos. So if you want to support me and the channel and the mission, which is to create journalistically vigorous, evidence-based medical content, then please consider subscribing and joining the paid Patreon. It would honestly mean the world. Back to the episode. Now there's a lot of very interesting theories about a whole range of different things that could be influencing allergy rates. The rise in seasonal pollen allergies is probably a little bit easier to explain just because it's mainly attributable to one cause, and that's global warming. As societies industrialize, we burn more fossil fuels, which in turn has released more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. CO2 is a greenhouse gas, which means it traps heat from the sun, which warms the planet. And as CO2 goes up, so does the global temperature. This warmer temperature means that spring starts earlier and summer ends later, and that gives plants more time to grow and produce more pollen, which ultimately means there's more pollen around for longer, hence your allergies are getting worse. It's the worst it's ever been. There are many cities reporting record high pollen counts. But when it comes to food allergies and skin sensitivities, the explanation isn't so simple. One popular theory is that we've become too hygienic. Seriously, compared to our ancestors, modern humans are clean freaks. We spend more time indoors, we sanitize everything, and we barely interact with dirt, animals, and microbes like we used to. So the theory is that because of this, our immune systems just aren't developing properly. This is known as the hygiene hypothesis. Otherwise known as the clean child theory. And this came from an observation from birth cohort studies. The theory goes that if you're born into a family where there's no older children bringing bugs and germs back from nursery to um, mature your immune system very, very quickly, when you know from the early infancy and you grow up consequently in a more sterile environment then you're more likely to develop inappropriate immune responses 
In essence, being too clean might lead to an immune system that overreacts to harmless things. And this was first hypothesized back in 1989. But there was actually, even at the time, a huge amount of conflicting data. I and mean, this birth order effect isn't consistent in other studies. The original study did show a correlation, but that doesn't automatically mean causation. There were so many other variables that just weren't controlled for. And just because two things moved together doesn't automatically mean one caused the other. In fact, I found this website that has some pretty funny examples of this, like how the share price of Coca-Cola apparently increased as more people Googled my cat scratched me, as well as how divorce rates in Colorado dropped when less people drunk milk. But obviously you can't say the less milk you drink, the less likely you are to get a divorce, right? I mean, I hope not. <laughs> Similarly, many of the other current allergy theories are based on patterns, not direct causation. So for example, vitamin D levels, the, the use of paracetamol or antibiotics in early infancy, more um, cesarean sections, a whole range of things. But there is one area of research where experts feel a lot more confident the answer lies. And it's a phrase you've probably heard before. Where I think we're sort of more confident the, the answers lie are around our gut microbiome. In recent years, the gut microbiome has moved away from an exciting area of research to a buzzword amongst wellness influencers. You know, when your microbiome is messed up, it causes all sorts of things. It screws up your immune system, your hormones, your mental health. So before we jump on the gut healing train, I want to add some nuance to this discussion. Oh. Uh, Understanding about the microbiome is absolutely in its infancy. Our ability to measure it, to alter it, all of those things, we're just at the absolute infancy of this. In case you didn't know, your gut is home to trillions of microorganisms, mostly bacteria that live inside your large intestine. What we know is there are over 100 trillion microbiomes, including 100 different bacterial species, all symbiotically living inside your gut right now. And the nature and the diversity of those bacteria and the chemicals that they produce have a significant impact on the way that our immune system develops its relationship with the outside world. Your microbiome is as unique as your fingerprint and it plays a huge role in digestion, immunity and possibly allergies too. Studies have found that children who develop allergic diseases often show specific patterns in their gut microbiome. So if your microbiome is off balance, i.e. you have more bad bacteria than good, then your immune system might become hyperactive to harmless stuff, hence you develop allergies. Logically, the next question to ask is can we change the microbiome to prevent allergies or treat them? Well, that's what researchers, including Professor Fox, are trying to figure out. And there's two main strategies to do this. You can either use prebiotics, which feed your existing good gut bacteria and promote their growth, or you can use probiotics, which are live bacteria that you take as a supplement and increase the amount of good bacteria you have in your gut already. But despite all the hype online, the evidence for how effective they are is very, very underwhelming. Professor Adam Fox explained this to me in more detail. We got a large group of um, milk allergic infants and they were randomized in either to a hypoallergenic formula, which they needed if they were milk allergic and they couldn't be breastfed, that did contain pre and probiotics so the friendly gut bacteria or didn't. And then they were followed up to see whether it had an influence on their allergic disease and whether they grew out of their milk allergy faster or slower or whether they were more likely to develop asthma or eczema or other food allergies, all of those different things. And we just didn't find any difference whatsoever. We were able to demonstrate that their gut bacteria did change, i.e. more lactobacilli and bifidobacteria, all the friendly bacteria that we associate with being less likely to be allergic, but it didn't make any difference to clinical outcomes whatsoever. So right now we're left with half the answer. We know there's a connection between our gut and allergies. We just don't know how to fix it or what to do with that information. Without sounding like a wellness influencer, we do know you can improve your gut health by simply getting 30 grams of fiber in per day, as well as cutting down on ultra processed food and eating a variety of fruit and veg. Beyond this, there's no proven way to manipulate your gut bacteria. But of course, when the science is still unclear, it opens a door for influencers to tell you somehow they have all the answers. If you have seasonal allergies, no, you actually don't. You have leaky gut. If your gut is already damaged, the best thing that you can do is start taking probiotics. I find it wild that after decades of research and multiple clinical trials, some of the best allergy experts in the world still don't have an answer, but we're all just apparently one TikTok wellness coach away from being cured. FYI, this is a real video I came across of a woman claiming a natural healer cured her son's peanut allergy with energy. In my experience, if someone claims to know something that top experts don't, then it's usually because they're about to sell you something. Nothing says evidence-based medicine more than a Ziploc bag with a mystery powder in it as well. And if they aren't trying to sell you a product, then they probably have a special program or course to sell you. Disclaimer, I can't give you personalized information unless you're my client and working with me. Take this once and watch those pollen allergies disappear. But there are things that actually do work. They're not sexy, they're not trendy, and no, they probably won't go viral on TikTok. 
So for example, weaning advice. And this is particularly relevant for um, families where the child is at high risk of developing food allergies. And as, that, uh, as mentioned, that, that really relates to having eczema. And the earlier your eczema starts and the worse your eczema is, the higher the risk of getting food allergy. And we now know with you know high level of certainty that early introduction of allergenic foods can reduce the risk of developing food allergy, so peanut for example, whereas delaying the introduction leaves that door open for food allergy for longer, which means it's more likely to happen. As well as also the basic things like taking antihistamines and a nasal spray. You can speak with your local pharmacist about the options available to you if you're really struggling. I've also seen a lot of buzz around this idea that local honey can cure your seasonal allergies. You're gonna go to a local place and you're going to get honey. Raw local honey. The theory is that local honey contains traces amounts of pollen. So taking it is like micro dosing your immune system and slowly building up a tolerance until you no longer have hay fever anymore. It sounds logical, but the pollen that bees collect to make honey is not the kind of pollen that causes hay fever. It's heavier, stickier, and it doesn't float through the air the same way that tree pollen does. But the actual principle that small exposure to an allergen over time can cause you to build a tolerance is actually a real thing. It's called called immunotherapy or allergy shots where small controlled doses of an allergen is administered under medical supervision and it's used to retrain your immune system. So if you're someone that genuinely suffers with allergies, then you can speak with a doctor about this as a potential option too. What would be the most important message you'd like viewers to take away from this documentary? Be aware of allergies and be aware that there are people who suffer from allergies and that that, that can have a really huge impact on their life. The world around us is undoubtedly changing fast and our immune systems are just struggling to keep up. And amidst this chaos between what we know and what we're still learning, there's a lot of noise, hype and false hope. But there's also some real science going on and real people living with these conditions and real work being done to understand why our bodies are reacting the way they are and better the lives of these people that are struggling. If you are struggling with allergies, then make sure you speak to your doctor to find out what evidence-based treatments are available for you and be careful what you listen to online. You can watch a previous video I made on how to tell if a health influencer is full of shit here. Until next time and see you soon.